Going into that, I would mention that in Kenya, of course, the statistics that are given by NTSA is between 2.5 million to 3 million cars that are on the road. Mm -hmm. I also happen to have uh, information from uh, Japan, the cars that are exported from uh, Japan. Japan exported 1.2 million cars last year, 1.2915. Mm -hmm. Kenya is number five in this uh, list because UAE did 171,000 okay. and then we have Russia which did 120,000. 20, then we have uh, Chile that did uh, another additional maybe 111,000. And then we have uh, one other country and then Kenya did 80,000 uh, units last year. Mm -hmm. These are cars that have been exported, used uh, into the Kenyan country. Right. And therefore, just to give you that figure, uh, regarding the motorcycles, currently we have about... Uh, 1.2 million motorcycles that are, uh, are registered in the country. About 200,000 are out of the road uh, because of various accidents and mm -hmm. all that. And then we do have about 100,000 or 150 that are used by riders who are riding company delivery companies. Okay. And then we have 100,000 personal bikers. And then we have 800 plus about 800,000 which are being used by Boda Boda riders in right. the country. Now, th uh, now, based on those statistics, yeah, and Kana, you deal in the industry, definitely. Yes. There have been quite some pronouncements by the, the, the government lately, you know. Such as? Such as uh, the banning of uh, importation of spare parts. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the directive to have only uh, the government, government agencies, government institutions only buy locally assembled vehicles. How does that pan out for an industry, like for, for the players in the industry like yourself? Well, um, <coughs> We have pros and cons on both sides. Okay. Um, for the vehicle, I would say that um, the directive is good for the country mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, I think uh, you already know that 95% of the vehicles which are on the road are all used vehicles. Uh, official sales for zero mileage cars is about 5%. Mm -hmm. And uh, me being uh, pushing, or me pu or rather pushing Honda, the, the Honda brand, um, I have to fight it out with Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Isuzu. So our market share for brand new units is quite small. Okay. However, the Honda brand um, on the parallel import is huge. Um, so the government, or rather the president's directive of only buying locally assembled units has cut me twice. How? Mm -hmm. uh, more than 60% of my sales was to the government. So I have to make do with actually 40% of sales mm -hmm. for, uh, to uh, the local market. However, having said that, uh, we kind of support uh, the, the, the president of this uh, directive. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, uh, this is a step in the future. Uh, somebody like some countries like South Africa are 100% um, locally manufactured uh, cars. Uh, this directive has come in a bit late, but still not too late. Um, you and me probably will have to uh, tighten our belts and uh, take this directive a bit hard, but it will definitely leave a good legacy for your and my kids. We will inherit a cleaner environment, um, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yes. Based on, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on how you're going to ensure that maybe you have a local assembly or something, mm -hmm. but Dr. Kalua, could you tell us the effects of just having these second-hand cars or second-hand spare parts? What are the advantages or disadvantages? Great advantage, one of the most important is that the cars are affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kenyans are able to afford cheaper cars. The advantages uh, are, are, are various on the road because you can be able to do this just because we do not currently have a good or effective uh, mass transport system and therefore we would want to drive our own cars. Disadvantages are various. <coughs> One, there is lack of creation of jobs. 
South Africa, if we all wanted to make it affordable for used cars and therefore used parts, uh, is to go the South African way where the imported car which is used is highly taxed and, uh, and uh, the age limit because of emissions and so many other things so that you make the car that is new more affordable like in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And therefore that would be a direction that would be taken. You remember the minister, the just immediate uh, former minister for trade banned the importation of used parts. And therefore, this is something that Kenyans need to understand. Of course, in buying new parts, institutions like Toyota, Honda, and others will be able to have more sales, but it also translates to safety. Mm -hmm. There is a big challenge in Kenya, just like in many African countries around. You find that uh, the used cars, we, you just had uh, I mentioned, we are importing 80,000 cars a, a, a year. And therefore, that translates to close to 6,700 cars monthly. monthly right. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in the month of November alone, Kenya imported 10,000 cars plus. That is 2019. 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, going on and on. And therefore, the risk is that there are cars, the, 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 the government has put in place for inspection of used uh, motor vehicles. This must be done very, very effectively. And uh, because they, there would be that tendency, maybe something is not very well checked, mm -hmm. and especially on the African side as opposed to other places where the inspection is done for the exporter and right. not for the importer. Mm -hmm. the, the, the parts, there's big danger in this, Betty. There are parts, and even in the classification of importation of uh, parts, there are some parts like tyro dents, the brake systems, uh, you cannot test the engine when it is being exported. There is a lot of mile because these things come mixed up in the containers. You have no capacity to do proper inspection, testing, to be able to be done secure. Some of the accidents that we are having in this country, mm -hmm. it's not just the carelessness of our drivers. Unfortunately, we think and imagine that it is carelessness of drivers, mm -hmm. but it is actually the parts that are coming in the, the, there is no uh, capacity to inspect all this, especially if you have an institution, only one that is doing the, the process of identifying, checking a container load when they are mixed up. So there are things that needs to be, need to be done in a proper way. The right. same thing applies in motorcycles now that we are talking about automotive. Mm -hmm. You find that most accidents are not done, some of the accidents, actually a big number, close to 30, 40 percent, happen because the assembly process was not properly done. Okay. And therefore, uh, you find that some bolts and nuts have been left out because the process of uh, assembling this is not very well done. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we need to fix. I believe the automotive policy that has been put in place is going to put this on check and uh, so that Kenyans can be safe on the road. You, you wonder why even after all efforts by NTSA in ensuring that there is safety, how come there is no reduction in the accidents, in the, in the, accidents right. in the country? Right. And this is one of the space mm -hmm. that uh, we, we need to check and also be responsible for ourselves, that we are not just buying everything because it's cheap mm -hmm. uh, instead of building also the local industry okay. uh, and the new parts uh, uh, space. Right. Um, Kana, it is said that as much as these uh, used vehicles that are being imported are cheaper, the operational costs are higher, as well as the effect it has to the environment. Seeing that there's, there's enough demand in Kenya, mm -hmm. what is barring or preventing you from starting a local assembly here? No, actually, um, that's a very good uh, point you've not, uh, noted. Uh, we are in the process of, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking to Japan to allow us, or rather uh, give us a license to start a local assembly in Kenya. We are already in talks with the government and we are talking to Japan as well. And uh, we hope that uh, 2020 would probably uh, be a good start. Mm -hmm. Yes. That 2020 will be a yes. good start. Yes, hope so. And the, the consumption, do you think it will go down? Mm. Not really, mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. um, you mean consumption of, of the second-hand cars, the used the cars? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you see now that's that's uh, that's a that's a part and a policy of uh, the government uh, to 
play it out. Mm -hmm. we, are, uh, we are simply a cog, but we are trying hard uh, to, to get into the SKD. Mm -hmm. Yes. First. Now, Dr. Kalua, the, you are also a member of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, and one of the challenges that uh, KAM says that the industry faces is the lack of homo, is it called homo? Lob Homo homologate as in having cars designed specifically for Kenyans needs you know having models that can only serve Kenyans needs is that a direction that the industry needs to take definitely mm. and in the Kenya Association of Manufacturers mm -hmm. I, I, I had the motorcycle sector I'll mm -hmm. give you an example of that and then take it up to the to the automobile right you find like uh, Honda took five years mm -hmm. to build a motorbike based and, and, and done for Kenya. Mm -hmm. As a result of the five years of serious uh, uh, implementation process, serious uh, study, what kind of oil is best for this, the running a motorcycle of Honda in Kenya is much cheaper than any other. Okay. But every other institution, all my members of the association are doing efforts to reduce this cost to be able to do something that is good for this. Making a car that is specific for a country is a must. Because mm -hmm. some of the cars that are imported in the numbers of the used cars, they will come with some oil in the gearbox that is not of the standard of the climate that is here. Mm -hmm. Some of these have mm -hmm. stayed and have stayed in the car. And therefore you find that the car has, has, uh, has, uh, has, uh, has a blown up uh, um, uh, in gearbox. You also find engines that are problematic as you move on. Even tires. There mm -hmm. are tires that are meant for, for areas of uh, different climatic conditions, mm -hmm. like, the, like the snow and all that. Then you bring the tire here and you're in trouble mm -hmm. because this has not properly checked that this is not the right tire for this place. Mm -hmm. And therefore, having a car that is made for the local market is definite. It is deliberate, mm -hmm. including the consumption, for instance, you will not find a car that comes in from, uh, from Japan with an engine uh, that uses uh, diesel because our quality of oil is different. It cannot take some of this because there is that, uh, there, there that process mm -hmm. uh, that, is, uh, that is in the engine that will not take up this kind of a process. So it's highly technical and therefore working towards uh, ensuring that the local market the, the statistics, the standards, the research mm -hmm. are done for a car that can be used locally. You know, you can get into a car and spend your three years, five years with a guarantee. And yet the used car, you may not be able to get a guarantee for right. this. Right. And therefore there is no value of money because you keep getting into garage. And even in our country, <coughs> the system of garage is not even well done. Mm -hmm. And then even more important, in other countries like Japan, you're talking about UK, UAE, there is the annual or biannual uh, motor vehicle test. We lack that here. Okay. Because this is only done for cars that are, are supposed to be for uh, the, the cars that are commercial uh, use, but the personal cars are not checked annually or biannually. And mm -hmm. therefore, the parts that you're bringing that are substandard, <coughs> The, the vehicle that is not well checked, the oil that is not regularly uh, checked, you just try an engine and it is fine, it is moving. Mm -hmm. We dip our people in accidents. In accidents. And we keep wondering where, uh, what are we not doing? Right. NTSA must be supported to make sure that the process of local inspection is done mm -hmm. so that Kenyans are safe and our, our, our level of uh, age increases as we move on because all matters, uh, all issues matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Kana, as he says about the, 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 you know, coming up with models that work for the Kenyan space, mm -hmm. where does this conversation start? Does it mean we need to have a national coordination center or authority for the automotive sector? Can it start there? Well, not really. Mm -hmm. What we need in really, uh, what we need to do is make sure that uh, uh, the government and the, the, the motor industry, people from the motor industry, actually get together. Mm -hmm. Then only they can come up with policies that suit or are suitable for the entire population. So that way I think um, it, the government has to lead. Yes. Mm 
the government has to take the lead? Yes, Where yes. does that conversation and, start? And also to, to do that, we now have associations in the country. Mm -hmm. There is the association for parts uh, makers, there is association for motorcycles, there is association for, for the commercial vehicles. In, in KAM, we have the automotive sector, very efficient with all the parts department, the motorcycles, the, 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 uh, trucks, uh, the, the trucks, you know, all that, those. Mm -hmm. We need to strengthen those institutions mm -hmm. because the improvement of these sectors can only be done by the sector players. They know what parts can be made locally. Currently, even in the motorcycle sector, we have already, there are institutions like my institution and other institutions in the motorcycle sector who have already started making parts mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. But there is no tax advantage at all. Even though they are producing up to about seven to nine parts locally, an, imported, an importer who is doing assembly under a tree is earning the same, uh, the same profit. There is a 25 rebate uh, per percent uh, for, for this kind of a process. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be tight, and I believe that this is going to be sorted out by the automotive policy, which I request the government uh, to be able to push so that it can be done, so that Kenyans can start benefiting out of all this. Those sectors, the associations, will be able, you know, you will have people saying, okay, we can now produce tires locally, mm -hmm. stop importing, increase the, the rate of tires. We can, imp we can be able to make this, you know, we can s gradually move from 0% of localization easily within at least five years into a level of 40% or, or 50%, it depending on the sector of motorcycle or automobile. And the moment, because there are two ways, mm -hmm. to grow it gradually, or to slam instructions in some of all this as policy, and you will have everybody who is doing production of automobiles in different countries to come and set up uh, the, the, the <coughs> plant here, uh, uh, plant here mm -hmm. because this is going to be done. And we are now looking at a region that is EAC region. Mm -hmm. We are not only looking at Kenya. Right. So whichever country in EAC that is going to take the first step, my friend, the industry it. of automotive will change this country. Mm -hmm. The motorcycle is the lowest hanging fruit. Look at the 800,000 motorcycles. Look at the 6 million people that they are employing on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the 6 point, uh, about uh, 20 million Kenyans who are using motorcycles to travel every single day. Right. Imagine if just the seven parts or six parts are implemented tomorrow within three months, Betty. Mm -hmm. we have employment for 4,000 people, employment guaranteed. For 4, people. That means that the sector has quite some potential. Yes, yeah. Yeah. huge potential, mm -hmm. yes, for sure. And, and, and what, what, does, what is the government doing to ensure that it taps into this potential sooner rather than later? Kana. I think, uh, <coughs> I think uh, the East African uh, bloc, we have huge potential, but we have to be the first to, to initiate first to initiate the SKD, first to initiate the lowering of uh, the importation age, first to create policies that are going to not only uh, benefit uh, the exchequer, but even uh, the users themselves. You see, uh, you know, it is a big question whereby the government has banned, the, for example, the, the, the spare parts, the used spare parts. Mm -hmm. But it has to also think the other way that uh, there are so many, um, you know, uh, tables that uh, depend on the brand from this uh, business. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs to come, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, so that they can even have uh, or give time for the other, other sectors to absorb the deficit that is going to be left by. Uh, the, the the used par, uh, parts business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I said earlier, the government needs to lead. It needs to lead. Yes. Let's talk. Uh, I'll say Go just ahead. just uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Pure, pure lack of coordination. Okay. The president issues instructions that we want to build the manufacturing sector. The treasury is given the responsibility mm -hmm. to build or to create policy that is able to 
establish the, the kicking off of localization. KAM presents budgetary proposals to the treasury, to the, to the, to the budget committee and all that. Five times consecutively, this goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. When it goes to treasury, treasury says uh, that uh, Ministry of Industrialization has not looked at this thing. Then there is a whole fight between Ministry of Industrialization, mm -hmm. Ministry mm -hmm. of uh, Treasury. Mm -hmm. And yet it's a very simple thing. Since the time of C.S. Rotich into the, into the current time, there is a process that you wonder. And then there is the EAC level. Mm -hmm. Instead of Kenya's position being one, because they will always say that we have done, we have not done, we are going to do this. The president, you remember, he called the team, the entire team of KM into Mombasa and agreed this is what we are going to do. Within three months, it shall be done. Where is it? So People are just dilly-dallying with the process mm -hmm. instead of getting what is supposed to be done. I have given an example, a mere example the policy on motorcycles, which can even be done in advance uh, ahead of the automotive policy. If the seven parts are implemented, already we would have, and this means bolting out of the ESE if we have to, mm -hmm. because Kenya is ahead of the other countries. We have 4,000 Kenyans employed within three months. What else would we want? That is definitely These are people that who may be, be sitting on, 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 on what they're supposed to do. Right. And therefore, we need to have that human kind of a process. And where you have a problem, call Ministry of Industrialization, Ketiapa. Ministry of uh, Treasury, Ketiapa. Mm -hmm. The Kenya Association of Manufacturers. And the The, 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 the mm -hmm. players in uh, motorcycle parts assemblers. Mm -hmm. The makers of motorcycles. Semeni apa sasa. So that a dialogue is hard, you know. The dialogue is hard. If there is a challenge, it is done. Mm -hmm. But then, oh, treasury watafanya, wale watafanya. Okay. And they are the same people who can be able to sort this out. Okay. So the president is seen to be saying one thing, and on the ground, the same people who are supposed to do something. Definitely one voice but needs I to have, be spoken. There is hope. Uh -huh, there is <laughs> hope. Okay. Yeah, um, we have Betty who understands <laughs> the industry. Okay. We have the minister who had already, mm. who has left, uh, who had already done the proposal of framework, the, uh, the mm. framework of the, of the automotive policy. So right. there is hope. Yeah. I'm not saying this as if there is no hope. There is but hope. It, the hope is taking too long. It's running <laughs> away. Okay. This is the problem. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, and a lost opportunity is gone. Mm. So we, 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 there is hope. There is and hope. And there are people like me. Okay. And I believe many others like mm. Kana mm. who are ready to change this country and okay. make things happen, not just talk. Okay. This is just what we need to right. do. Right. As we talk about growing the industry forward, is the human capacity there? Kana? Uh, <coughs> human capacity? Across the value chain, you know? Well, of course, yes. I mean, you see, we have the talent. We, we, have, we have people who want to work. And there is always, always, people are hungry to learn more. You see, so we have to provide a platform where they can fully expand their knowledge and test it. Mm -hmm. You see, we have, for example, uh, we have the, the colleges, tertiary colleges in Kenya. We have the universities. They just don't dish out half-baked students. They are students who ha actually have the know-how, the technical skill. So it's just that we have to provide that platform. And we, we have investors who are interested in coming up and nurturing that talent. Mm -hmm. You see? So I think, uh, you know, the capacity is there for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bringing up young talent, Dr. Dr. Kalua. Yes. Talent we do have. Mm -hmm. And not only today, but also in future. If you visit my Facebook page, you will see today I had a hundred and about 20 or 130 students from Jonathan Glog mm -hmm. Primary School. Okay. And I was there because if you ask a normal, uh, a, a, a normal young Kenyan, they will say, I want to become a, me a, a member of parliament. I want to become a captain. I want to become a doctor. Why is that the case? Because student tours are done in only parliament, they go to KICC, a tremendous place, of course, for the scenic uh, issues, mm -hmm. and then they go to the airport. We, the industry players, captains, I request, and I have requested on my Facebook page, come on, 
Let's open our institutions for young kids so that they, we can help them to help to, to make their career. Mm -hmm. We have so much. Look at the qualifications. People who are uh, qualifying on, uh, from automotive industry. There are many. The TVETs, Kenya is leading uh, in many countries. We have many people. You don't have to have, uh, to have uh, uh, a degree to be able to, do, to, to work in this institution. Right. I employ close to 100 people at uh, our, our, our facility. And they have, they have livelihoods that is done unknown to you, they even making the motorcycles. We don't have places where people can actually service motorcycles very efficiently. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for creating jobs. Mm -hmm. One motorcycle rider, the one you, so, you see on the road, border border, mm -hmm. that guy supports eight people, of, uh, eight members of a family. Mm -hmm. A tremendous opportunity. So the job opportunity is there. The qualification for people who can be able to make a difference is there. Mm -hmm. And we can be able to make a tremendous difference. Right. Do you ride to work, Dr. Sanwa? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh. I make motorbikes. Of course, I have to, to okay. ride uh, for me to make time, especially mornings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets very crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's cheap. Okay. It's efficient. It's people fast. fear bikes, but you have to train. The problem right. is uh, you really have to train for you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. There is nothing as enjoyable as riding okay. uh, in this city. When, when you know what you're doing and you have to invest in that. Uh, you figure most of the complaints from uh, motorists are just border border people are disturbing us on the road, you know, maybe they're not getting training. What's the problem, Kana? Uh, as as he, Dr. Kalwa said, it's, uh, it's right. It's just about training. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not that we want to stop that business, no. Vis-a-vis yeah. uh, -vis selling cars, we also support the motorbikes as well. But I think the government, uh, government needs to come up with some kind of law to rein in rogue motorbikers. You see, as, as long as we have uh, a system which is followed, uh, I think we are good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, of course, when border borders came in, there was an influx. Most people were just learning in their neighborhoods and taking a motorbike and yes, riding. Yeah. So maybe it's about time to you know, streamline yeah. the sector. Yes, yes. I, I have... You know, this is a whole subject on its own. Yeah. So if I start <laughs> now, I think <laughs> it, will, it will end more. Okay. I have a solution yeah. for the motorcycle sector. Which is? I have it. And uh, I am looking for the minister so that I can make a presentation as we, as we put together and even ahead of the conference that is upcoming so that we don't just scratch the surface. Mm -hmm. We deal with the process once and for all, mm -hmm. including inspection of the motorcycles and because we don't have uh, a center locally they need to be inspected through the dealerships of the various makers so that everyone takes responsibility a big percentage of the motorbikes are made under trees guys are given uh, a, 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 an opportunity to make five bikes per day and therefore you go there you have a headache you forget five bolts that, uh, that uh, you are supposed to do and you, you, you end up uh, causing an accident because mm -hmm. the guy just left out the bolt that is supposed to hold the bike to turn to the left. So you right. turn to the left and the thing will never it's turn to the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people just die. And we are killing our own people just because we are not careful. Mm -hmm. Substandard for us. And this can only be mm -hmm. found out. A solution will not come from just the border border riders. It has to start from the makers. Do we have a standard for making motorbikes okay. in Kenya? Mm -hmm. What is the standard? Is it being adhered to? For you to qualify to have a specific uh, amount of, uh, of rebate from the government uh, taxes, what will you have done? Are you making local parts? Are these parts known to be of good standard mm -hmm. or are they just expensive and are you creating job opportunities? So the, it is vast. It is vast. And there are so many opportunities, including gadgets, so that you can have a, a, a sticker or, or an e-card on every bike and use the cameras on the road so that any bike that is said to be, to be committing some, some funny things, mm -hmm. it is picked on the system. It is not this issue of just saying because someone had a jacket that is yellow and KMD, whatever, you can never get the guy. Right. But if a guy crosses the light and there is the electronic uh, gadget on the, on the machine, 
that guy can be found at 11 or 2. He crossed the lights. And then the government embraces this institution that is employing and supporting 6 million people. Mm -hmm. That more that than 20 huge. million Kenyans are using the motorbikes daily. Mm -hmm. Respect them. Set the rules. Get earning out of this. And then for mm -hmm. that, the government has an opportunity of collecting not less than 12 uh, uh, 1.2 billion on a monthly basis. Okay. <coughs> Easy. At about just 30, 30 shillings. The guys make about, uh, about 1,000 shillings daily. Mm -hmm. uh, 1,000 shillings on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. 30 shillings is not an issue. They will support. Okay. So these and other issues that have been said by my colleague are things that we can change this country. Things that and we, we can, can change. Be, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gentlemen, yes. we are running out of time here, but I will give you just 30 seconds each to give us your final remarks. Kana. Okay. I, I think I'll give the opportunity to Mr. Uh, Dr. Kalua first. <laughs> okay, no problem. Well, uh, I think uh, the, the country has a lot of potential. And uh, the, having all these uh, problems like the coronavirus and the locusts and all, mm -hmm. I hope and I pray to God that, uh, uh, you know, this come to an end. Uh, we have a lot of potential and we can move forward. Right. Yeah, provided we all together. We all come together. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll say that the automotive sector in Kenya has got very low hanging fruits that as a country we can engage ourselves into immediately and sort out the mess of unemployment in this country. Right. I suggest from the bottom of my heart we must fast track the automotive policy. There is no reason that is valid that this document can be waiting for such a long time mm -hmm. and we have not done it. We can do it and we can be able to change this country. I want to congratulate the people in the sector. They can employ so many people. They only lack support that must be done. And I suggest the time is now the because this is now. our country. We can change our country and we can fix things. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think that's a good note to end this conversation. Well, that was Dr. Isaac Kalua. Um, he's the chairman at Motorcycle Assemblers of Assemblers Association of Kenya, as well as Farid Kana, the general manager at Honda Kenya, discussing matters the automotive industry and how to grow it. We now move to other news. Local businesses have started to feel the heat of the deadly coronavirus, with the Stanbic Bank monthly Stanbic monthly index showing a major drop in business confidence in February. The purchasing index, the purchasing managers index, rather for February is recorded at 49.0, the lowest reading since November 2017. This comes as Industrialization Ministry formed a multi-sectoral team to monitor the impact of COVID-19 on corporate Kenya and offer mitigation measures. Take a look. What started as a simple virus in Wuhan, Hubei province,